your insurance company probably doesn't want to pay your claims. Well, this is my experience. And right now I'm in a dance with SA Home Loans over a, uh, a fallen wall, which they won't pay for. They're not going to pay for this. So we're actually beyond whether they should pay or shouldn't pay. The point I'm at now is this insurance company, SA Home Loans Insurance, has been dealing in bad faith about this claim the whole time. Because they knew they're not going to pay for it because they sent their assessor, they sent their assessor who gave them a report. They didn't give the report for perusal. And this is important because I'm going to tell you a story a bit later about why if your insurance company refuses your claim, you must ask, you must ask for the assessment. Where's the assessor's report? Okay, I'm going to tell you a story now because this is, the story is very interesting. So, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, massive storm in Durban, the roof got damaged and there was a landslide. Assessors came out, assessor looked, uh, submitted a report, Re the claim was rejected, budget insurance, claim was rejected. So I was like, okay, cool, where's the report? Let, let me see the report, let me read through the report. Bring it here, let me look at it. Just bring it, I want to see something. <laughs> bring it here. So, they sent me the report. I read the opening of the report and knew they were in more trouble than they realized. Because the report said, the guy, this is the explanation. The company had come, they said we went on site and we spoke to Mr. Goldstone and blah, blah, blah. And we looked at the damage and... So I said to them, I replied and said, this whole report is a fraudulent document. This whole report is a fraudulent document. Why? Because they never spoke to me. I don't even live on the site where the, where the, of the property where this happened. I was not there when the assessor came. The assessor wrote in his report, he did speak to somebody. He actually didn't even speak to a man. But he didn't speak to me. But his report back was that he spoke to me, Mr. Goldstone. Now... So we went from zero, they're not going to pay anything, to, okay, uh, 12,000 Rand, we estimate 12,000 to fix it, yes, 12,000. So imagine, this, like insurance companies love hush money, yes, 12,000 Rand. So I said, no, I don't want 12,000 Rand. I want the roof fixed. That's what I want. I want the roof and I want the bank fixed. So now insurance companies are in this conundrum where, if they don't, if they repair something and for whatever reason they think it might break again, they have to repair it again. So what they try to do is reject initially. But if you catch them in a technicality, boom, 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 which they always try to do to you, right? That's their whole game is catching technicalities. If you catch them in a technicality, they will not fix it. They will rather send you 12,000 Rand. So I said to them, no, keep shoving the 12,000 Rand. I want you 12,000 Rand. You know it doesn't cost 12,000 Rand to fix a roof. I mean, come on, you're in the insurance business. They then came back and offered 70,000 Rand to basically, shh. Yeah, I said, bring the money here. I got things to do. I got other things. Bring the money. <laughs> so I took the money. Uh, hired this contractor. This dude fixed the roof, bruh. Uh, and, like, you know, I don't give my money often. I don't have opportunities often to give my money to colored bras who do like uh, contracting on that level. Uh, and when I do give it, I hear always a little story, hey, no, there's a problem here. Yeah. No, you see the problem here. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't want that situation. But this bra, this housing, bra, this roofing bra, I'll put his name, I forgot his name right now, I'll put his name in the comments, was amazing. This old strip, this old actually went through the roof and he said, let's redo this, redo this, relay the, the sheeting, relay the, the, the beams across. The man basically built a new roof all within budget and less than four what they had. So they were still marching to do this and do that. So there I was now <laughs> sitting with an insurance company that was trying, I don't know they were trying or the assessor, because they're in cahoots with the assessors to a, to a degree. You have to admit that the relationship, the logic of the relationship, if you are an assessor and it's in your best interest to get more work, you have to make sure your client pays the least to their clients, which is us, the people. And if they pay a little bit to us, then you know what happens, what that means. That means that they are able to make more money, right? So back to SA Home Loans. 
they say home loans. <laughs> they decided they're not going to pay for an insurance claim, which is a fallen wall. After a storm, whenever they're not interested, they don't care. As far as they are concerned, wear and tear, the wall's going to fall anyway. Why should they pay when it happens after this particular incident? Sorry. Okay, whatever. You send your assessor. Your assessor says, nah, don't worry about this. We know the game. I've just explained the game. We know the game. Now what you must do is, you must send me the assessor's report. I want to see. I want to see something again. Bring it here. They don't send the assessor's report. What they do is they say they, they're not going to pay the claim, but then they don't send the letter saying that. They just tell you that. And then they only send the letter three days. Coincidentally or not, they only send the letter after writing on their Facebook page. Now, they will deny and say the letter was always coming, but it took them three days, and then it only took two hours after writing for that letter to arrive. So, if you think that it's suspicious, the whole point I've been making throughout this whole exchange with SA Home Loans is that they have been acting in bad faith. And I'm going to prove to you that they've been acting in more bad faith than I even realized. And that's partly because after I posted, people started inboxing me and writing in the comments things I didn't know about insurance companies and things I didn't know that they're supposed to do. I'm going to tell you, talk to you about Sean, Sean Rangan. Sean Rangan, this is this all wrote. You can go look in the comments. You wrote something very fascinating. He posted a document saying that companies must abide by uh, policy holder protection rules, the fair treatment of policy holders, 2018. This is basically making sure that your insurance company is treating you fairly. And there's a few points I wanted to point out. Fair treatment has to be central. So central to your insurance company is that they treat you fair. That's, that's their number one thing. Not protecting themselves, not the assessors uh, colluding with them to make sure people don't end up with, uh, with payments. You should be central. And in the SA Home Loans case, this is not happening. This is not happening. SA Homelands had decided already that this is their recourse. There's lots of little details here, which I'll fill you in. Another point is the policyholder should have clear info and kept informed. Now, part of the big problem we have as South African insurance consumers is that when we sign up these policies, there's pages of stuff that we don't really read or understand. Now, as much as it's your responsibility to go to those fine details and understand them, it is also the responsibility of your insurance company or whoever you're holding a policy with to do their best to explain to you and to show you that this is this and that is that. They should be there in your space showing you the stuff and regularly, right? Thank you, Sean Rangan, for this. Number four, advice must take into account your circumstances. All our circumstances are different. So when they give you advice, they must always consider everything that's around you, everything that revolves around you. So... What type of income bracket you in? How serious is the area you live in for crime? All those things must be considered when they're dealing with you. They can't just blanket everyone. We live in different areas. We have different income brackets. There's different circumstances. And so what they're saying is you must care for your customer. Like they must just, you must just care for the customer. And point number five, most important. Policyholders are provided with products that perform as led to expect. So however you're expecting this thing to perform, whatever you bought and you were told or you were led to believe it does that, that's what it must do. If it protects you against fallen walls or burst geezers or uh, collapsing roofs or whatever, it must do that. Or you must be, ex it must be made clear that it won't do that. It must be clear to you that this will not be covered. And because this will not be covered, this policy will exclude that in your premium you can't pay a premium for something and then only when it happens they're like ah we don't really cover that now they don't know that they don't know that people know this stuff in fact i didn't know this stuff now i know this stuff now you know this stuff now you can go to them and say according to the policy holder protection rules fair treatment of policy holders you should be doing x now again my point is they have been acting in bad faith. And this is now another indication that you are not central to your, to your company, to your uh, insurance company when you have a claim, or just in general, just as a person. Because when you have a claim, it's the only time you actually need them. My man Evie Bremer in Australia, 
messaged me and said to me, this is his industry. He works in this industry. He said to me, they must provide reasons for rejection first. Then your first port of call is to have a claim reviewed by the internal claims team. Now, how many people with insurance policies who've had claims rejected knew there was an internal claims team? How many of you knew that? Let me tell you something. I went back and looked at the rejection letter. In the rejection letter, they spoke about the ombudsman, they spoke about legal proceedings. Not once did they mention the rejection claims team. So there's another process that happens within before you forced to go out. What? What? Can you believe that? So, Kareen, Kareen Button, who is the the, the the claims manager who's been dealing with this and is uh, a little bit stroppy, I would say, maybe, and maybe a little bit confident in her negotiation skills because she's not exactly been playing softball, you know, about this whole thing, has now changed her whole demeanor after, and she's going to say it's not after the Facebook post, but it obviously is after the Facebook posts. She's changed her whole demeanor and has now suggested that this process will be sent, don't worry, this process will go to the internal claims team. What internal claims team? From where? All of a sudden there's an internal claims team. Once again, my point is that Home Loans has been acting in bad faith. The fact that Evie Bremer in Australia is the first person to tell me about an internal claims team and only afterwards, unrelated, you now, when this thing becomes a big issue, say that you're going to refer it to the internal claims team. You've been acting in bad faith. So, here's the thing, guys. Whether SA Home Loans decides to fix this wall or not, it's not, it's not even the issue anymore. This wall, to be honest, I don't think it's going to cost more than uh, 10,000 Rand to fix. And I'll tell you why, because... When I, okay, I mustn't say that because then they'll watch this video and they'll say, we saw that you said only 10,000, so yes, 10,000, no? It's going to actually cost 100,000 to fix if you're listening into Home Loans. 100, 100 grand. Anyway, the issue here is not whether SA Home Loans can uh, give the money. The issue is that if you pay for a policy and you want a peace of mind, the least you can have is that peace of mind and they can give you uh, in your time of need whatever you need, whether it's a contractor, money, or whatever, to sort out what you need to sort out. That is the only reason we have insurance policies. We're not friends with insurance companies. We don't want to hang out with you on weekends. We just want you to give the service that we pay for. And not to bully us. Don't bully us. Don't belittle us. And don't block us on your Facebook pages when we are complaining because we want people to see. This is our voice. What sort of company can be trusted if they block people? If you block people on your page when they complain, then you cannot be trusted with anything. That being said, I don't want people to not use SA Home Loans. Don't get me wrong. SA Home Loans employs lots of people. They employ people who need the jobs. They employ people that have families. I don't want SA Home Loans to go down. I don't want them to be in trouble. I want their support, but I want them to behave in a way where their company is essential. We pay premiums. We pay premiums for sometimes our whole life and sometimes nothing happens and they walk away with that money. They walk away with that money. Clean. Gone. The least they can do is when something happens, and it's not even a big amount, is to come and say, look, you've been paying, you've paid tens of thousands, twenties of thousands, some of you, okay? I don't know if anyone pays hundreds of thousands of insurance. Maybe some of you do. The least we can do is give you the assistance for this one claim. Because even if we give you 15,000, yeah, 20,000 to fix this thing, You've still given us more money than we can ever dream of for, for nothing, really, because that money is not going to be used to fix anything in your house. It's just in case money. <sighs> Feel informed. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your experiences have been. And uh, hashtag SA Home Loans Unblock Carbon. Please, SA Home Loans Unblock Carbon. I just want to talk.